Republicans shot down all but one of the amendments suggested by Democrats. The most shocking and illustrative moment of yesterday's debate. <laughs> you, you. It came when the Republican speaker actually asked members not to use the word racism while debating legislation that will disproportionately impact voters of color. Republicans don't want to be called racist for passing racist legislation. Fancy that. During debate, our next guest, State Representative Rafael Inchia, explained in detail to Texas Republicans how their election policies have targeted people of color. Courts have pointed out over and over and over again intentional discrimination against African Americans, intentional discrimination against Latinos, intentional discrimination against people of color. These are not my words. These are three federal courts across this country making 10 findings of that intentional discrimination. Intentional discrimination against people of a certain race. Is that racism? That is. Ms. Hinojosa. The, those words, intentional discrimination, I think can be fairly characterized in that manner. We can talk about racial impacts of this legislation without accusing members of this body of being racist. I mean, come on. Tonight, the Texas Senate decided to send the voting, right, voting restrictions bill to conference committee. Joining us now is Democratic Te Texas State Representative Rafael Anchia, chair of the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus, and Brittany Cooper, associate professor of women's and gender studies and Africana studies at Rutgers University. She is the author of the fabulous book, Eloquent Rage. Uh, let me start with you, State Representative Anchia. Republicans seemed oh so uncomfortable using the word racist. But as you pointed out, the policies of the Texas Republican legislature have a history of dis discriminating against people of color. Well, and this isn't old timey newsreel stuff. This is uh, digital and this is contemporary. It's all happened during the last uh, decade on voting rights matters. And these findings of intentional discrimination, I mean, go one step further than just saying a discriminatory effect. These courts have said you meant to discriminate against Latinos, African-Americans, and people of color. That's damning. That's a damning record. So it's against that backdrop that we debated that bill for almost 13 hours last night. And we knew this day was coming. We had broken quorum twice. We had gone to Washington, made the case for the federal government to act. And, uh, you know, you heard the groans in the background from my Republican colleagues. They don't even like it when we talk about intentional discrimination. Uh, and uh, they prefer to talk in the language of, and you probably remember this, purity of the ballot box. Uh, that was mm -hmm. a, a famous uh, exchange that we had on the House floor that went viral. Uh, but it, we have to call uh, it what it is. Intentional discrimination against people of color is racism. And that's the bottom line. It was an unfortunate uh, statement. And uh, again, it was not me saying it. These were federal judges that were appointed by Republicans and Democrats from across the country that made these findings over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, Brittany, I mean, many Republicans campaign on this type of dog whistle around issues involving race, whether it's voting or social safety programs or especially immigration. But then they bristle if someone calls it racist. Yeah, I mean, look. Well, you know, it's not racist if you don't say it's racist, right? Um, this, this sophistry that goes on on the right where they want to be, they are being brazenly, intentionally racist, and they don't want to be called that. But I think that that exchange um, where there was this discourse about the difference between intention and impact is really important. Most of us who work on studies of race and racism have said for a long time that we actually should be looking primarily at disparate impact. If you can prove that these policies make it harder for people of color to go vote, we don't actually need to know about your intention. What we know is that you act in ways that make the world harder for black and brown people to participate in democracy. But what is also true, and I think what is most infuriating, is that in this case, we also know that they meet the intentionality standard. They aren't just acting in ways that are having bad impacts. They actually are intentionally doing so. And we have a real problem in this country where most of the folks who are racist want to brazenly, openly be racist. They just don't want to be called 
racist. And you don't need to be a federal court to know what racism is. We all know what it is. And these folks who are being called out, they know exactly what it is. They just want us to have this, this air of civility that says that we can act in ways to use power to devastate people. And then we don't want to be held accountable by being accurately accurately described by the adjectives that the dictionary gives us to describe this kind of racist behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're going to act it, I'm going to call it out. <laughs> State Representative and, uh, and Gia, how are you feeling tonight now, now that this bill that you fought so hard to block uh, is inching closer to becoming law? And, and how concerned are you about the impacts of this bill on not just voters, but also election workers? Well, I'm a son of immigrants to this country, and we take voting rights very, very seriously. My father grew up under an absolute dictatorship. My mother grew up in Mexico, um, where they had one party rule for 70 years. So when we talk about voting rights uh, in our family, we take it very seriously. The fight's not over. It shifted to the House floor. And uh, this bill will not become law for 90 days. Uh, and it will not be effective. So um, I looked right at the camera today, and I, and I looked at our, our friends in Washington. I looked at our uh, United States senators, including our Texas senators. And I said, it now is the time to find common ground on Voting Rights Act, on, on the Voting Rights Act. Whether it's the John Lewis Voting Rights Act or the For the People Act, we need federal protection because re Republicans in the state of Texas have shown themselves incapable of protecting the freedom of, of uh, vote for millions of Texans. And uh, that's really where I am. I'm hopeful that we're gonna get something done in Congress. When we met with Vice President Harris, in the Roosevelt Room after the first quorum break, she asked us to hold out and give Congress more time to act. We did that through two quorum breaks, uh, a regular session, a special session, and now there are 90 days left uh, before this law goes into effect. So the clock is ticking and we need action now. 90 days, the clock is ticking. Texas Representative Rafael Anchia and Brittany Cooper, thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be right back.